We'll be talking about a Mujaddid who revived Islam again in the life of people. A revival of the Sunnah and a follower of the path of the Salaf. He is a worshipper, a Zahid, a person who disregarded the dunya. And he is the scholars that work hard. Then I'll be talking about the great Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and his name is Ahmed Ibn Abdul Halim Ibn Abdul Salam Ibn Taymiyyah and his nickname is Taqiyuddin. Grew up in a family of knowledge. His father Abdul Halim Ibn Abdul Salam and his nickname was Shihabuddin. He is a great scholar from Fuqaha al Hanabila who started before his father, which is the grandfather of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. And his name is Al-Majd Abdul Salam Ibn Taymiyyah. And people always mix up between Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, the grandson, and Ibn Taymiyyah, the grandfather. They were both great scholars. And between them was the father, who was also a scholar. And the scholars say that the father was like a star, a shining star, caller full of knowledge. But he was overshadowed by the light of the moon and the light of the sun, which is his son and his father. And the word Taymiyyah comes from the grandmother, a preacher, a caller to Islam. And they're all named after her. The whole family were a family of knowledge. So his uncles and grandfathers and cousins and brothers, they're all ulama. But he was the one that was the most famous and he stood out. He was born in a city called Harran, in the southern part of Syria, on the border with Turkey, in the year 661 Hijri. And when he was six years old, his city was being attacked by the Tatar, the Mongolians, who were attacking the Muslim lands at that time, and who attacked the Muslim lands several times over a period of 40 or 50 years. And they get defeated, and they come back again, and they get defeated, and they come back again. And each time they attack the Muslim lands, they have the victory at the beginning, but at the end they get defeated. So when he was six years old, he had to migrate with his family from Harran, Damascus, due to the attack of the Tatar. And there he stayed with his family in Damascus and started seeking their knowledge from a young age. That by the age of six, he had read the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, which contains over 30,000 ahadith. At the age of seven, he memorized the Quran. And at the age of 10, he used to go to the gatherings of knowledge and compete with people and students of knowledge who were older than him and ahead of him. And they have been seeking knowledge years before him, but he started competing with them and he excelled over them. So that was him from a young age. Ibn Taymiyyah was a pious man, a God-fearing from a young age. And he never wasted time that one day his father took the whole family, took his brothers on a picnic, but he refused. And when they came back home, he said to his son, you have missed out. So Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, but Allah, I have not missed out on anything. During your abs absence, I have memorized this book. So the father was amazed and he decided to test him. And he found out that his son at that age, by the age of seven, he had memorized that, that book. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he seeked knowledge and he learned from 200 scholars. And by the time he was 20 years old, he started teaching and he started giving fatawa, especially after the death of his father, who was the teacher of Al-Madrasa al sukkariya which is one of the famous schools in Damascus at that time, where people used to come from all around the world to seek knowledge. When the father passed away, Ahmed ibn Abd al ibn Taymiyyah, known as Taqiyuddin, inherited or was nominated to fill the, the position that was vacated by the death of his father and started teaching and giving fatawa. But before we talk further about his life and about events that took place in his life, let's talk about the state of the Muslim Ummah at the time of Ibn Taymiyyah. The political state was not the best. The Muslim land was being attacked repeatedly 
by the Tatar, the Mongolians, who were attacking from the east. And from the west, the Romans were attacking from the west. And they wanted revenge after Salah al-Din rahimahullah defeated them. At the same time, there was the internal disputes, the internal fitan between the leaders and the generals of the Mamalik. So the Ummah was weak at that time. An attack from the east, attack from the west, and internal disputes. So those events made Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah love, protect Islam and the Muslim land. At the same time, he made his concern to correct the actions of the Umara and to shift their focus away from fighting with each other to fixing the condition of the Ummah. The social life wasn't the best either. The, the society that existed at that time was a mixture between some of the Tatar, the Mongolians, who stayed in the Muslim land and some of them accepted Islam. But at the same time, they had kept some of their bad habits that they brought with them from their lands. And the Tatar, the Mongolians, were not civilized. Add to that, the state of knowledge and the state of the scholars at that time was not the best. So we had at that time harsh, strong mentalities that following only one opinion. Sticking only to one madhab and each group thinking their madhab is the only correct one and not willing to accept any other opinion from another madhab. And the door of research, the door of understanding was shut completely due to that strong and harsh mentality and dry mentality that people had developed at that time. So we said that Rahimahullah Ibn Taymiyyah started giving fatawa and teaching at the age of 20. So Imam Mazir Rahimahullah was one of the first people that called Ibn Taymiyyah Shaykh al-Islam. Usually it's given to a person that he had excelled in all areas of knowledge, excelled in the areas of hadith, fiqh, usul, aqidah, tafsir, qiraat, ulum al-Quran. A person who usually gathers and excels in all areas of knowledge, people give him the title of Shaykh al-Islam. And later other, other people, scholars followed and gave Ibn Taymiyyah the title of Shaykh al-Islam. And by the time his reputation started to increase and he started to have a big name and people in the far east and the far west started to hear about him and he had strong students of knowledge around him like Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he was one of his main students who himself was a, a great scholar and was given the title of Shaykh al-Islam Thani or Shaykh al-Islam the second and Ibn Kathir the one who wrote the tafsir tafsir Ibn Kathir well Imam al-Zahabi he wrote in the history and wrote about the hadith and the narratives of the hadith and Imam al mazdi as we mentioned before. So he had strong students of knowledge around him. Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he speaks about Ibn Taymiyyah and he said, I did not see a man like him and he had eagerness for teaching and loving knowledge like him. He said he used to wake up in the morning praying Fajr and he used to sit down after Fajr, not speaking to anyone, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the sun rises and then he will pray two rak'at and then he will start teaching after that until the sun sets. So his day was full of worship and knowledge. Then after that, his brothers were saying that he would go home and will be doing Qiyam al-Layl where he mixing between, mixing between Qiyam al-Layl and studying and he will only sleep few hours. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah never got married due to two factors. The first one, that he was too busy in knowledge and he all, only wanted to focus on knowledge. Another factor, that he was imprisoned 21 times in his life. His students say about him, that he was very generous when it comes to giving knowledge. That when a person comes and asks him a question, he does not only give him a short answer and turns him away, but he gives him a complete, comprehensive answer. That he makes sure that person who asks him that question understands the answer and he makes sure that he is strong in that mas'ala and he has strong knowledge about that matter. And that is one of the things or the disputes he had with the scholars at his time. They used to tell him, a person comes to you to ask you a question and instead of giving him a short answer, you give him a long answer. He said, I love to give knowledge with sincerity and I love to my students or to be strong students of knowledge. They said about him that when he used to speak and give lessons, knowledge or words used to be flowing from his mouth and he does not stop. He does not run out of words. They used to say that he would close his eyes 
that he does not want to be disturbed in his teaching and only you see words and knowledge flowing out of his mouth and he does not stop at all. The fatawa that he gave people were collected together and compiled in a series of 37 volumes. And there was also another series called the Fatawa al-Kubra collected and compiled in five volumes. He had a strong character and he was a firm person and he would be firm and strong in his opinion especially if he believes that he has the strong delil, the strong evidence on that. He used to be sharp and have a sharp voice, especially when he's having debates and discussions, but he used to force himself to be patient. At that time, at his time, rahimahullah, a lot of bid'ah started to spread. And those innovations, people brought with them from their own countries. And it was something that was spreading in their culture. And later they mixed it, mixed it with the deen and it became part of the deen. And he used to deny the bid'ah, the innovation strongly. And his path was strict on the path of the sunnah and the manhaj of the salaf rahimahullah. And he used to always debate with the scholars at his time. And especially a lot of them were on a different manhaj and different path. Especially Ibn Taymiyyah, he became a mujtahid. And the scholars at, at his time were only strict on the four madhahib. And they, they denied and rejected any opinion from outside the four different madhahib. However, he never lost respect for anyone who had an opinion different than his opinion. That's why he used to always tell his students and his followers that you see me sometimes being strong and tough and harsh when I'm speaking to those other scholars who have a different opinion than me. But that is a situation where I have to apply that, that strength and I have to apply that harshness. But there are great scholars and that does not mean you should get yourselves involved with my disagreements with them. We are scholars and we disagree with each other but those scholars, they, they deserve the respect. One day, one of his main students, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he came to him, giving him the good news that one of his main opponents had just passed away. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was very upset and he screamed at Ibn al-Qayyim, he told him, how can you call the death of a Muslim brother a good news? Then he took all his students and they visited the family of that scholar. He went to his children and he said, I can fill the position that was vacated by your father. Whatever you need, whatever your father was providing for you, I can provide it for you. That was the, the, the sincerity of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. He debated with different people at, this, at his time. He debated with the Sufis. And he himself admitted that the Sufis are not all on the same path. There's some extreme Sufis, and there are Sufis who only did ijtihad. Some of them his jihad was right, some of them his ijtihad was wrong. He debated with the Mu'tazila who were a deviated group. He debated with the atheists. He debated with the Jahmiyyah. A lot of those deviated sects. But yet, he never treated his opponents with disrespect. And one of the main things that was spreading out of the time of Ibn Taymiyyah was the spread of philosophy. And they started mixing the Aqeedah, the Muslim belief, the Muslim creed with philosophy. Until the Aqeedah of the Muslim, the belief, the belief became hard to understand which was full of philosophy. And Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he rejected all that. And he was in the opinion that the aqidah of the Muslim should be plain and should be, should be only according to the Quran, the Quran and the Sunnah. And on top of that, he learned the philosophy so he can debate with those philosophers and he was able to refute all the claims and all the arguments. However, at his time, there was some scholars, some people who had weakness in their heart. And they took their disagreement with Ibn Taymiyyah as a personal matter. And they developed hatred and grudge towards Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. So they decided to go to the Sultan, Muhammad ibn Qalawun. And they tried to convince him to imprison Ibn Taymiyyah. And not just that, they gave him a fatwa that Ibn Taymiyyah is deviated and he should be. Muhammad ibn Qalawun rahimahullah, he had so much respect for Ibn Taymiyyah. So he had refused that request from the scholars who hated Ibn Taymiyyah. But Muhammad ibn Qalawun, he had weakness at that time. He was a bit weak. And he had one of his assistants. That his name was Babas al-Jashinkir. And uh, there are two people by the name of Babas and the state of the Mamalik. The first one was Abdaha Babas. And he was with Sultan Qutuz at the time of Imam Al-Izz ibn Abdul Salam, 
and who, who defeated the, the Mongolians that attacked when they attacked the Muslims at that time. Later on, there was another person by the name of Babas al Jashinki, but he was a corrupted person. And he conspired and plot with the other scholars to get rid and overthrow the Sultan Muhammad ibn Qalawun on the expense of imprisoning Ibn Taymiyyah. So Muhammad ibn Qalawun was overthrown and Ibn Taymiyyah was imprisoned. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad ibn Qalawun, to regain the authority again over Egypt and Bilad al-Sham by the support of some of the other, other, other Arab tribes and Babas al jashinki was and Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah was freed from the prison. And then Muhammad ibn Qalawun, he wanted to take revenge on those scholars who had plotted against him with Babas. So he went to Ibn Taymiyyah and he spoke to him in private while other people were watching. And he had a long conversation with Ibn Taymiyyah. So later on they asked Ibn Taymiyyah, what were you talking about you and Muhammad ibn Qalawun? He said he wanted me to give him a fatwa to all the scholars who plotted against me and him. And I refused his request and I told him there are scholars. So Ibn Makhlouf al-Maliki, one of the main opponents of Ibn Taymiyyah, and he was one of the reasons that Ibn Taymiyyah was in prison a few times. Ibn Makhlouf al-Maliki, he said, we did not see someone like Ibn Taymiyyah. We plotted against him, but we could not defeat him. And we, when he had the power, he forgave us and he defended us. As we mentioned before, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he witnessed and he went through so many fitting in his life due to the, his disagreement with the scholars at his time and he went to jail 21 times. However, if each time he went to jail, he used to see that opportunity. He was teaching knowledge even when he was in jail. He wrote some of his most famous books when he was in jail. So time was something very important for him. On top of that, he had an important saying. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, what could my enemies possibly do to me? If I'm imprisoned, if I go to jail, it is a time alone I have for myself. And if I am sent on exile, it is freedom. It is a trip, it's a journey for me. وَقَتْلِي شَهَادًا My Jannah, my God and my happiness is in my heart. Many scholars at his time and after his time gave him the title of Shaykh al-Islam. Over 85 scholars who were at his time or after his time, they referred to him as Shaykh al-Islam. And some of them, they even had different opinions than his opinions. And they opposed him in certain matters. But yet, no one denied the position and the respect Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah deserves and the respect he had gained. And from those that spoke about him, called him Shaykh al-Islam, Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah, the great Imam. Al-Imam Jaladin al-Suyuti, Imam al-Sakhawi, Imam al-Zahabi, Imam al-Qayyim, and Ibn Kathir. Imam al-Zahabi rahimahullah, he said about Ibn Taymiyyah, he has a strong knowledge about the form of Zahib. So those that, that, that claim that Ibn Taymiyyah rejected the form of Zahib, that is not true. And the only time he had, a strong, he had an opinion, he had an ishtihad that was different or was outside the form of Zahib, he had the strong evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah to back up his opinion, his argument. Strong and firm on the Haqq, and he does not compromise the Haqq. Always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, see him continuously uttering with the remembrance of Allah Almighty. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he saw that the Muslim Ummah was being attacked. So he used to continuously encourage the scholars to fight and show the izzah, the dignity of Islam. And during one of the times when the Muslim lands, when the Muslim state was being attacked by the Tatar, the Mongolians. At that time, the leader, the leader of the Tatar was Qazan, who later on, he claimed to be a Muslim. And he had a huge army. And the Tatar were uncivilized. And whenever they entered a country, they destroyed that country completely. So Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he went with a group of the scholars and he went to meet with Qazan himself. Qazan had prepared lunch for them. So all the other scholars started eating. But Ibn Taymiyyah stood away and he did not eat. So when Qazan, he said to Ibn Taymiyyah, why aren't you eating? Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he said, because that food is haram. That is from the money that you took with no right from the Muslims and other people, I cannot eat from that food. So Qazan was stunned, how can someone speak like, uh, to him like that? Then Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he started screaming at him. 
and walking towards him and he said, you claim to be a Muslim and your father and your grandfather were kuffar, were under kufr, and they were not as bad as you. The people who were with Ibn Taymiyyah, they started moving away, fearing that when, when, when Ibn Taymiyyah will be hit by the sword, when, but that did not happen. What happened? Ibn Taymiyyah only earned that respect and Qazam was speechless and he could not say anything. And Ibn Taymiyyah, he walked out by himself and the people who were with him, they walked away from him. But they said, by Allah, we walked away with disgrace. And as much as we tried to please Qazan, he disrespected us and he ignored us. And the only person who gained respect at that time was Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And he fought in the great battle of Shakhab that was between the Muslims and the Tatar. And he was encouraging the army and motivating the army and he was fighting people who described his fighting in the in the battlefield described him as a strong warrior and he fought in another battle against the crusades who came from Europe and Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah kept on being tested and the, one of the most famous agreements he had at that time was the matter the mas'ala of talaq the Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he said he was in the opinion that if the man that in one place at once in one go he tells his wife qalik, 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 three times that only counts as one divorce doesn't count as three and he opposed in that the opinion of Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad, Imam Shafi, Imam Hanifa so the people at that time they were so strong on their madahib they, they strongly denied the, the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah and they, caused, they, they accused him of being a fatan, a person who is causing fitna and a person of who is deviated in addition he had this agreement with them over the matters of the grave how to visit the grave, when is it allowed to visit the grave and they accused him of saying that it, it is haram to visit the grave of the Prophet and of course Ibn Taymiyyah did not say that so they went and lodged another complaint about Ibn Taymiyyah so he was imprisoned and each time Ibn Taymiyyah would, would, would go to jail he will take his books with him and he will also write books but this time the punishment was harsh and the conditions he was going through in jail this time were harsh. He was banned from teaching. He was banned from preaching. He was banned from reading. His books were taken out from him and he was also banned from writing. And that's when he, just, he started to get weak and get sick. He used that time when he was in jail to read the Quran. And the scholars that were imprisoned with him, he went to jail with him and said he read the Quran 82 times and he died while he was completing the 83rd Khatim. And he died while he was reading Surah Al-Qamar, the end of Surah Al-Qamar where he was saying, where he was reciting, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَنَهَرٍ فِي مَقْعَدِ صِدْقٍ عِنْدَ مَلِيكٍ مُقْتَدَرٍ The believers are in great gardens and rivers from beneath them, and in, 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 in a great state with a great Lord, the Almighty Lord. And he passed away when he was reading that. As soon as the news had, sp that had spread that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah had passed away, people started, started rushing to the place where he was imprisoned and 60,000 people went to the place where he was imprisoned and 60,000 people followed his janazah.